After cracking the code, breaking into the matrix, and creating the ultimate perfect team of six for Gen 1, we have decided it was finally time that we conquer another of the Pokemon regions. Johto presented itself as a sequel featuring 100 more Pokemon, twice as many gyms, and a fateful battle with the legendary trainer, Red. So what would the perfect team for this game be? As always, the rules of the challenge are no items in battle, no overleveling gyms, though this time we will not implement this for a lot of the Kanto gyms, as the level curve is extremely messy, set mode, no legendaries, and of course, we are only allowed to use six Pokemon for the whole run, including for HMs. So let's get into this. Upon starting the game, we wake up and head straight for Elm's Lab to help him with his errand, getting our first Pokemon in the process, Pokemon number one, Totodile. Totodile is by far the best starter in the game, as Shikorita has some form of negative matchup against almost every gym in the grass bullying Johto region. Cyndaquil is decent, but as we will see, Totodile has a lot more uses throughout the game. So we bring the Pokemon egg from Mr. Pokemon, we deliver it, and we are ready for our next Pokemon. Pokemon number two, Zubat. Zubat can be found in the Dark Cave, which we can access as soon as we dodged or defeated a few trainers patch Cherry Grove. Crobat is by far the best Pokemon that can learn HM Fly and is a great answer for any grass type Pokemon, such as our rival starter, Karen's Vile Plume, and all of Erica's team. Johto offers a few flying types, but none are really that good outside of Dodrio, which is available way too late, and Firo, which is definitely not as good as Crobat. With our current squad, we are ready to fight the first gym in the game, Faulkner, and here is the start of Totodile's amazing early game performance. Equipped with a berry, Totodile easily sweeps Faulkner by spamming Rage, which gets a power boost every time Totodile takes damage, which is pretty nice. Going forward, Totodile has us covered in the Union Cave, thanks to learning Water Gun at level 13 to beat any rock type we may face. And if you were expecting that we'd catch a Mareep here, sorry to disappoint you. But Mareep did not make the cut, despite Ampharos being objectively great. What we tried to do here is get a team that can be obtained in gold, silver, and crystal, the latter of which does not give you Mareep. Anyhow, Totodile and Zubat proved to be enough to cleanly beat any trainer in Slowpoke Well, as well as Bugsy's gym trainers. Which nicely leads us through gym number two, and guess what we're gonna do? Once again, Rage Croc gets it done, baby! <gasps> Rage allows Totodile to gather a lot of power against the two cocoons, and as scary as Scyther might be, Fury Cutter does not start off strong, and we just beat the bug up before it can kill us, so... We got this. With our second gym in hand, we beat the second rival, thanks to Zubat not ever caring about his Bayleaf, and we head straight towards Goldenrod City, home of the third gym leader, but before we face her, it's time to get our third Pokemon. Pokemon number three, Abra. Abra is one of the best Pokemon you can get in this game. It has great special attack, speed, and a ton of amazing matchups thanks to getting three elemental punches, which are special moves in this game, giving it ludicrous coverage. But we will get to that later. For now, all we need to beat the gym leader, Whitney, is another not necessarily healthy dose of rage sweeping. Clefairy uses Double Slap on Croconow, giving us many rage power-ups as the number of hits, which turns Croc into a killing machine that can breeze past Milk Tank. Now, if we had not quite damage output to beat Milk Tank 1v1, we could have finished the job with Kadabra's blazing fast speed. Speaking of Kadabra, our next stop is Ecritique City, home to the third rival fight and Morty's Gym both of which are completely swept by the spoon-carrying psychic with psi beams and fire punches from Magnemite and Bayleaf. See, the great thing about Kadabra is that your moveset will consist of Recover, a stab move, and two elemental punches, 
And the fact that those punches are relatively cheap, buyable TMs, and you can buy a bunch of them, and customize a Kadabra for the fight at hand, makes it completely broken to use. After being done with Morty, we play a visit to the Kimono Girls, get HM Surf and teach it to Croc, and get HM Strength and teach it to Croc as well, which kind of makes a pseudo HM slave out of him, with a moveset of Surf, Strength, Cut, and Ice Punch, but he'll be fine. Especially that it is time to add another Pokemon to our team. Pokemon 4, a Chad Water type. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why get a Water type when you already have your starter? First of all, for Alligator sadly does not get HM Waterfall in this game, which is kind of weird, but we gotta play with what we have, I guess. And second, Water types are actually nice to have in this game and they match up relatively well against most things. Now, the fact that we specifically need a Waterfall Mon restricts our options further, like for instance, barring us from getting, you know, Tentacruel, which is our first candidate for this. And sadly, we can't have Starmie either because Water Stones are only available once you reach Kanto. So that's also off limits. See, all of the hype of having an enhanced Pokemon variety is completely messed up by the fact that one, a lot of the new Pokemon are so trash and total waste of time. And two, access to the Evolution Stone and useful items like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam is restricted, especially in Gold and Silver, which limits so many otherwise good Pokemon like Jolteon, Starmie, and others. Given the circumstances, we decided upon Lantern, a Pokemon with great typing and decent bulk. Now, the obvious pick was probably Gyarados which the game practically begs you to get by giving you a high level shiny. But nah, we be Lantern Gaming instead. Now, if we were willing to break the six Pokemon restriction and have a Waterfall HM friend, we could have also had Tentacruel or Lapras, both of which are pretty good. Next up is Chuck, which is begging to be messed up by our team. He gets swept by a subscriber, the Kadabra though. You now know what to do to be a Chad. The next gym leader on our list is Price, which very easily falls to Kadabra's Thunder Punches and Croc being a Feraligator with Surf to drown the Pillow Swine. After that comes Jasmine, which mostly gets swept by Fire Punches, and her Steelix gets drowned as well. Easy peasy. We, as we should, are gonna skip over the most boring arc of any Pokemon game the Team Rocket Radio Tower split, though a very important event occurs right before that. Pokemon number 5, Pillow Swine. We figured that a ground type would be nice to have as two of our mons were weak to electric and Pillow Swine is one of the more passable ones. And though we agree that this moveset is um, not the best, we're going to be fine. Speaking of being fine, the next gym leader is Claire, the dragon type gym leader, which is the perfect practice target for Never Melt Ice Ice Punch Kadabra. The Dragonairs gets outsped and one shot like absolutely nothing. And as scary as Kingdra might be, it cannot beat our whole team as Kadabra into Peraligator is all it takes to knock it out. Which means all that we have to do is grab the Master Ball from Professor Elm and head to the Elite Four. And here, you may think that going to the Elite Four with only 5 Pokemon is quite ballsy, which to be fair, it is. But a certain youngster Joey would love to talk to you, personally. So with our level 46 5 Pokemon squad, we are locked and loaded for the Elite Four gauntlet. Will is mostly a Kadabra sweep thanks to Never Melt Ice and Bolt Beam coverage. Koga is completely a Kadabra sweep thanks to Psychic and Fire Punch. Bruno is also a Kadabra sweep thanks to Psychic and Ice Punch. Turns out Kadabra is pretty good in this game, huh? Against Karen, we kind of have to use our other Pokemon though. For Alligator and Lantern switch around to counter Umbreon's hack strats. Crobat destroys Vileplume. Kadabra beats up Gengar and Murkrow with Psychic into Ice Punch, and Han Doom falls to a single surf. So far, so easy. Now against Lance, we kind of played fast and lost. We have enough counters to everything, Kadabra, Ice Punch, Okos, Annie, and all Dragonites. 
Lantern sits on Gyarados all day, and other Pokemon are not that threatening. The Pokemon League champion title is ours. In Kanto, our squad easily dispatches the first few gyms. Pillow Swine mostly sweeps Surge. Lantern is great against Misty as long as you use something else for Quagsire. Erica is Crobat food. And Sabrina falls to us brawling with her Pokemon and winning the War of Attrition. We then proceed to get the Poke Flute radio functionality, which we totally did not have to backtrack to Johto because we forgot to get the radio in the first place. Nope, that did not happen. That definitely did it. So we finally get access to our final Pokemon. Pokemon 6, Snorlax. There is nothing to say about Snorlax. It is the single best Pokemon in all of Gen 2, and waiting for it is definitely worth it. Though, we could have gotten a final team member earlier in Ursarang, which is essentially discount Snorlax, but that would only have happened if Pokemon Silver allowed it. With or without Snorlax, a few surfs is all we need for Blaine, and we can proceed to go fight Blue. Lantern beats Pidgeot switches to Crobat against the Executor and defeats it. We sack Crobat against Alakazam and use Subscriber to revenge kill. We use Gator to defeat Rhydon by means of a tactical ice punch that was definitely not a misclicking to serve. Gator then bails out from Gyarados, allowing Lantern to zap it down. Arcanine comes last and Lantern falls to it, which allows for Alligator to one-shot. Mostly a clean fight. The last test to our team, though, is none other than Red himself. His legendary Pikachu gets one shot by Earthquake, baiting out Charizard. Nothing better than to switch into Gator and beat it up with Surf. Next is a delicious Crobat food item in the form of Venusaur, which the bat definitely takes. Espeon comes next, perfectly in time for us to go to Snorlax, who easily shrugs off psychic moves and one shots with Shadow Ball. Red's own Snorlax comes in, we hit a tactical toxic and get first turn paralysis from body slam. We misclick a shadow ball and that could fully paralyze which allows red to beat us before we rest off paralysis. However, pillow swine is perfectly able to 1v1 Snorlax from this position, leaving red with only his blastoise, which we have a perfectly healthy lantern in the back for. And that's it. Our perfect Gen 2 team. Obviously, there were some other Pokemon we would have loved to have. You know, like Tentacruel, Jinx, Ampharos, Geodude, Lapras, a few more. But we think this lineup is a pretty decent one. But, what do you think? Would you have picked different Pokemon? Please feel free to tell us in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out these videos out, because, I mean, why not? And have a nice one.